Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Mildra, and I will be your gaming monk for the evening. This is day nine of the RPG A Day 2019 challenge. Today's word is critical. Now, I've looked at a few other entries in this, and I've seen people talking about critical role, which I've already gone down that rabbit hole a few times when I had to explain why the why I don't care for the Mercer effect, especially when a certain colleague of mine kept bringing up critical role. But I digress. Now, instead, I want to talk about the reviewers who were my major influence to my current style. Now, obviously, the big one is the myriad of RPGs on RPG.net. But beyond that, there also is the likes of J. Stephen R. Young, who isn't completely a reviewer, but he was a major influence in the idea of starting up a blog. You can find him at Life and Times of a Philippine Gamer. There was also the most unread blog, which I thought was very good at highlighting games outside of the usual bubble, and who did a lot of great stuff with um, Savage Worlds and got me into that system. Also, there is there's Christian Linke, who I thought did one of the best reviews of um, of the Conan the Barbarian film that everyone hates, but me, and a bunch of others. The last which is The Gentleman's Guide to Gaming, also known as Click Clack Bang on YouTube. While I started out with my enjoyment of him through his lengthy dissertations on various games, I will admit I fell out from him when he started to focus a little bit too much on Vampire the Masquerade. Or rather, the World of Darkness as a whole. And now is basically a hype man for that particular line of games. No disrespect to the guy, but I don't want to be the type of person who is shackled with just one setup. My whole idea is that R is that I want to celebrate RPGs as a whole. And that means I can't stick with just D&D, or just the World of Darkness, or just Savage Worlds, or just GURPS, or just Hero System. Dear God, but I, wouldn't, I don't want to do that. I have to be as broad of a scope as I feasibly can. That obviously means that there are certain games that I'm not going to touch, as I highlighted in the 10 games I'm never going to review, which ironically I've already broken that rule at least once. But I have the mindset that, I, that I'm a gaming advocate. This is also the reason why in my critiques I stopped using the 10-point thing, because... It never made sense to me, and I always found it to be a little bit superficial at best. Like, what defines something that gets a 3 versus something that gets a 3.5 was always my question. Especially since the skewing towards what is average kept changing. And I think a case in point with this is how average for a lot of video game reviews and, and some other reviews is a 7 instead of what the actual average should be, which is a 5. But beyond that, the style that I end up going with is much inspired by those previous bloggers. It's less about asking whether or not this game is good or this game is bad, and more about who would I recommend this to? What sort of style is this going to, game going to appeal more to? What sort of people would I not recommend this game to? What sort of style does this game not favor? This is also the reason why I use a fair bit of GNS theory, though not completely. And that's only when I use terms like narrativist, gamist, simulationist, and so on. The whole idea is a game that I have has a certain audience that it either already has or is trying to court. And it's my job to try and figure out what that is and make an educated guess as to who I'd recommend it to. And sometimes it's a case of, yeah, go ahead and get this game. Other times it's a case of, get this game, but with an asterisk. And then there's the cases where, no, don't get this game. That's why I end up using the scale of strongly recommended, recommended, caution, and avoid. It is very broad, I will freely admit that, but it's broad by design. It allows me enough leeway to the point where people can get a general idea of how I feel about a certain game without having to mingle about about which number counts as what. 
In other words, it lets me get straight to the point. Now, obviously, this is something that doesn't entirely work when it comes to other mediums. Like, I wouldn't use this for, say, anime or for manga or for video games. But I do think it works perfectly fine for tabletop games in its own weird way.